Ellen King. Welcome to Nature of Reality Radio. Heard about you from your interview with Rex Bear of Leak Project. And uh, love your artwork and I love the uh, material that you talk about. Um, you seem like a very, very spiritual person indeed. So um, let's uh, get this show on the road. Uh, why don't you do a quick little, um, to start off, a uh, quick little introduction with who you are and what you experience that cause you to do the stuff that you do. Um, <laughs> some people can talk for hours and hours about their life story, but I'd like to just request that you not spend too much time because we, we got a lot of subjects here to talk about based on what I'm seeing on your uh, channel. So, uh, oh yeah, there's so uh, many things. But thank you so much for for having me, Andrew, and, and requesting for this interview. I um, actually, I you know, I was working in the movies and Hollywood film productions in Georgia. And it, that's when I really started my journey full throttle, I would say, because I really started diving into YouTube videos. I wanted to listen to the longest videos because of the education that I was receiving from a lot of different scientists and researchers and free energy technology people. And so I kept myself entertained for 12 hours or more while I was on sets. So for many years, I did that. And um, started really developing a, a full picture of all the activities going on on Earth in this moment in time, especially with UFOs and all that, because it all ties into everything that's going on. And now more recently with the revelations of the different um, beings that are potentially here among us that we've not known about, that's really like raising eyebrows, I think. And I believe we're just gonna come into the awareness that we are not the greatest, highest level of intelligence on this plane of existence. We most certainly aren't, and um, planes of existence. You uh, discussed that in your interview with Rex Bear about this um, other um, world. I'm drawing a blank on what the name of that other Ek world is. You mean Ekinkar, the world of Ek. Yes, yes, and that's not the only world out there that's um, that's missing um, or that, that we can't see, so we perceive it to be missing, but it's, it's there. It's, everything is here in one space and time, and we're just our consciousness illusion perceive or allows us to perceive what we perceive but um why don't you quickly get into that give a quick little recap on what that little world's all about because i had never heard of that um prior to listening to your interview, interview with rex bear so give me a nice refresher and uh and if there's any other worlds that are worth touching on why don't you touch on them well yeah so my deep dives are always of the but not not the mainstream you know, ideas and things. I've always been interested in things that are unusual. And so being a spiritual person, I actually found Ekankar. And I am not the, the foremost authority on Ekankar, but it really resonated that there are different realms that are out of our visual perspective that exist and they exist in different sound frequencies. As we have sound frequencies here in a specific range, there are actually higher frequencies that create light. And so these other heavenly light realms are up above us in the atmosphere where we see the light coming from heaven. Uh, that's basically what the worlds of Ek talk about, but it also ties into the Norse cosmology of Yggdrasil and the nine realms that are depicted there. But there's also other cultures that talk about this kind of cosmology. Uh, thank you. Now, um, getting to your uh, the material on your YouTube channel, um, one thing that really stood out here, I'm, I'm seeing here, you have uploaded this, uh, you sure seem to upload frequently. That's, that's really good. Um, one video that seems to stand out here was one you did three weeks ago. I'm looking at the title here, and I'm, <laughs> Egypt, the land of thieves and swindlers. <laughs> of all the things for you to label Egypt as, you choose to label it, it as the land of thieves and swindlers. Oh, give me a break. <laughs> I'm sure you have a reason for why you'd label it that way. But, <laughs> but Egypt Absolutely. is known for so many things. Why would you, what's that exactly all about? The uh, thing the is, People don't look into the etymology of words, where words come from, where where does all this stuff originate? There's many different words that we're using right now that are actually very um, harmful to our language. Our language is very important and people haven't recognized this yet. We're in the lower state of consciousness and what is called the winter or the iron age of consciousness. But Egypt, so GYP 
means a swindler. And that is in the etymology. Anybody can go and look it up. Interesting. And uh, that wasn't what they used to call it um, back in the day. Egypt had its own uh, name, land of uh, Kemp or whatever it was. Kent, Kent, Kent. Um, it was the land Kemp, of Kemp. K-H-E-M, -E yes. It yes. was called Kem. So uh, also I've been looking into Hermes and what Hermes actually represents because a lot of people are following Hermetics and I do believe in Hermetic because I do practice for brands, uh, Franz Barden's work. But um, Hermes was actually quite the character. He was a god of merchants and thieves and stuff. So I'm, I'm kind of questioning that connection that perhaps there's been an overlay in time with this god Hermes that they worshipped. But the land of Egypt, now as we know in all cultures around the world we have darkness and light, we have good and bad, we have thieves everywhere. But what we're learning about Tartaria too, which ties into Egypt, is that Tartar actually means thief. And if, if Jip means swindler, then what are we dealing with? I believe we're dealing with a hijack of our entire world. The very first pharaoh, Akhenaten, was the first one to actually come out and say there's only one god. And there, that is when all these wars started inciting because of the religious beliefs that were of that day. He came out and tried to push this notion of one god theory, and there were many gods that people were aware of because the planets are, con are assumed as gods. But this is all in magic and mystery and the lost history of our world. People don't look into these things. No, they don't. Uh, by the way, I just want to forewarn you, um, this always seems to happen whenever I'm doing interviews at a faster rate. My computer seems to have this terrible habit of self-restarting in order for, to prevent overheating. And whenever I do interviews, it seems like it always heats up at a faster rate. I guess that's because we have very high energy. And uh, But I'll uh, just want to forewarn you, if I disappear all of a sudden, just uh, be patient with me. I'll, the computer's just restarting and we'll get right back to it if that happens. So, uh, But moving on, you have uh, uploaded a video here a day ago. Medbed update. <laughs> okay, we've been down this road before and it's getting kind of ridiculous how every um, so often someone says med beds are going to be released at an X amount of uh, X time and uh, there's nothing happening. And I'm think, and if you were to ask the guy, why aren't they released to the public? And they'll probably say something like, well, they were released, but they were only released within certain factions. And uh, and then, well, why didn't you say so when you said they were going to be released, that it was only going to be certain factions that find out about it? Well, t I don't know. But um, t your update, okay, um, is this going to be another case where you said that it's going to be released by a certain time and then there's no. going to be egg in your face when I, okay. <laughs> so, uh, no, what I, so let me just give you a little backstory. I actually was a member of Simon Parks Connecting Consciousness where all that, that noise was going on about, you know, this is going to happen, the Zim, Zim node and all this. And I was standing on the sidelines as a coordinator. I was questioning what I was being told to do in his organization. Not to get into his organization or anything, but the, the big talk was about the, the financial system that's coming, the quantum financial system and these med beds. So the med beds was always a warning because I've been on the fringe movement of listening to the breakthrough energy movement and the conference that they had and they've been having that in i believe it was norway or somewhere like that for since 2009 or 2010 they've been having these breakthrough energy movement conferences and they're talking about free energy and how to get it to the population without the gatekeepers at the patent office being interference so the med beds themselves i'm still hesitant um, on the information that's there. I, I just, I know that there's frequencies and frequency devices that can absolutely do amazing things because of, of different scientists who've been out here. I actually have a Spooky 2 Rife machine. So Wilhelm Rife was one of the people that actually put out some beneficial technology, but I still do not believe in these med beds. And I try to warn people about all of the imagery that they put out here to try to sell the idea 
to their minds that this med bed thing is viable when I don't believe it is. And I, I do warn people against this because we don't know what kinds of frequencies these things would be emitting. So there is an actual bed and it looks like just a regular bed. I had a friend who actually went to it. I don't know where this bed was located, but it was a regular bed and apparently it was supposed to be hooked up to some sort of frequency that was supposed to read your own, like read your individual biogenetics. And I'm like, this sounds too sci-fi to even be conceivable. And apparently you're supposed to sit in that thing for eight hours and she did and she said that she was really tired afterwards and that she thinks that there was a benefit, but was there any visual? No, not not really. Well, it's not so shocking to hear that they uh, make you tired if they have to heal you because your body's not used to something like that. And uh, and then um, it may take a little bit to recover, but of course, whenever, whatever, when you stop feeling so fatigued, you're better off than you were before the, the med bed, I, I hope. So um, the uh, thing you just mentioned about quantum financial currency, um, you have to think something's going down here with what we've been hearing recently about these banks going under and um, Silicon Valley banks, uh, Smithson's, so whatever that other bank is, and now um, Credit Suisse just, uh, I think, has suffered the same fate recently. Um, now, when we think of currency reset, we, we went down this road before and it, it keeps uh, driving people crazy about how the SAR just SAR might happen next Tuesday and then nothing happens and it's getting kind of old, but um, I mean, it's interesting that this is actually ha going down um, shortly before Pluto, which is currently Capricorn, is set to go into Aquarius at the end of the month, stay there for a couple months, go back into Capricorn until early 2024, and I think it may be going out, of, and then it's going out of Capricorn for a little bit, and then it may be going back into Capricorn for just a brief moment at the end of 2024, and then going back into Aquarius and staying there for a couple decades. Um, now you have to wonder what exactly is going to be going down in these two months that it's in Aquarius and you also have to factor in all the other things where all the other planets are also like numerology, what the number energies are signifying and all that. And there's so many things, nobody can make sense of all of it. But, um, do you have anything to say about what the, is going down with these, um, banks collapsing? Yes. How, what it's going to be uh, leading to? Well, I do believe that we're going to have a quantum based financial system and because the fiat currency we've been on obviously is a falsehood and a lie. There is no um, asset backed, you know, value to our dollar, which has absolutely, you know, been with us since the Federal Reserve was put into place. And so we have to get back to a gold standard. And I do warn people that any of the cryptocurrency, because it as, is associated with death, any term that they use that is associated with death, like corpse orations and mort gauge, all of these terms are signifying what allegiance they have. And it is a death cult. It's the death cult of Saturn. Saturn is an energy, but with, with this current financial system, I've seen the BRICS nations coming about. That's Brazil, Russia, India, China, and South um, South Africa. They are going back with an asset-backed currency, and it's coming about, and they're about to drop the petrodollar. So that means they're going to be dropping all of us and our financial state right now, but the banks are actually nationalizing themselves. They're merging together because this whole technocracy that is rising right now is going to be part of the industrialized world. And there's going to be two worlds that rise from this. This is also preordained in Dolores Cannon's hypnosis work that there's two Earths that are going to emerge out of this chaos that we've seen since 2020. And the two Earths I feel so far, because I can kind of see it happening, we're going to have a natural faction where people are actually returning to the ways of the Earth and then we're going to have the technocracy that's building all around the major cities with all the cameras and all the, um, you know, uh, monitoring of the New World Order. So that's what I see happening right now. Uh, thank you. And uh, the uh, uh, you mentioned something in your um, interview with uh, with Rex Bear about the. Um, 
the lockdowns that happened in 2020 and carried um, into um, for the next couple of years and aren't are really been go going on anymore now, but uh, we're going on in um, massive effect uh, March and April 2020. That claim had something to do with uh, trying to help us immensely at a uh, spiritual level. Um, and uh, how exactly did that uh, help us, aside from giving us the opportunity to spend time in our homes and work on inner work? Were there, did it, what it, did it do to the globe as a collective spiritual level? Have um, like shutting down and giving the earth the opportunity to <laughs> heal itself from any um, damage that humans may have caused to it. I hate to say that, but that's kind of uh, some the way some people have looked at it. So why don't you touch on that briefly? How did it help us spiritually? Yeah, sure. So, I mean, obvious, the most obvious thing was that it, it got us the opportunity to step away from being a slave to this vampiric system that we're under. This vampiric system has really not allowed people to take the time to see what life is truly like, if to just live your life and just have money. It's a little bit of an insight. A lot of people, of course, I'm sure were, were fighting with their families and stuff because they were on top of each other, not being able to go out and stuff. But at the same time, it allows people a different perspective and an opportunity for spiritual growth and just self-awareness. It shook the world awake all of a sudden because now there's this big event. Everyone has to stop doing what they're used to doing. And there's this big change because we're in the pendulum swing. There's always a pendulum that is swinging back and forth as we traverse through these different cycles of time. And this time that's happening now has happened before. It just happens in different phases. And it's a 26,000 year cycle if you follow a Western astro theology chart. Each age is about 2,150 years. Some of them are shorter because of the star cluster that is actually smaller, and that's the constellations. But based on that chart, you can read it if you learn about symbolism, and you can find out where we are in the timeline. And as we come into our spiritual eyes and we start looking and integrating some of the knowledge that's been lost to our modern day society, you can go into the teachings of India and Tibet and all of the ancient writings and see that all of the science is in the stars. This is the connectivity to the calendar clock that we need to, to truly understand what's happening in this plane. And the stars can never lie, but people do. So if you learn how to follow the stars, you'll have all the answers at your fingertips and you will know the future. This is how you can prophesize things by knowing the celestial alignments. There's farmers who still go by the moon phases and different planetary phases to plant their crops or to harvest crops. And then also, of course, the people who are studying the zodiac, all of the astrologers and things, they'll tell you absolutely what is gonna happen in your life based on celestial alignment. So how can that be a false science when it's actually the real science and foundation that we're missing in the society? Thank you. And uh, switching gears on one video you have here that kind of stands out to me, the four elements and more, well, <laughs> and more. Um, you talk about Chinese metaphysics, they have five elements. Um, and uh, the four elements, well, when you go to four elements, is that, um, is that more westernized? Or was um, or was there actually four elements before China and China decided to just expand on it? by um, adding the fifth element of um, metal, I believe it is, which we don't uh, usually think of as um, as an element in the Western world. But um, why don't you expand on the four elements and what exactly do you mean by and more? <laughs> well, the four elements, so I tie it into, if you consider everything in this existence coming from one substance that is sound, that sound emits light as it sends out its sound frequency. That light, as soon as it appears and is created, it creates a shadow. That's the yin and yang. Then from the yin and yang come the four elements. Yin being the fire principle, I mean the um, earth principle and the water principle and yang being the air and fire principle. Fire is, is light 
And with these four elements and these basic principles of our world, if you have this knowledge, you know the answers to every problem that's out in existence because everything springs forth from these four elements and it's part of alchemy. But the thing that they've done to our westernized world and to the rest of the world is they've created chemistry. And the chemistry overcomplicates the thing that used to be called alchemy. Alchemy is very simple. It has 12 different processes and so does the body. The body has 12 alchemical processes to, to break down the nutrients that is needed for our body to continue to thrive. And in alchemy, you have the 12 houses in the sky of the zodiac wheel that are also an alchemical process because it ties into the body. And all of these things are tied into one. So once you go into these foundational sciences, you will start to realize all around you that you're connected to everything by a divine thread that's called the tetragrammaton or the flower of life. And you can see yourself inside of everything else. So as I go into the four elements video, I actually go into some spiritual information as well. That's why there's more. Mm -hmm. Okay, I didn't put myself on mute there. All right, Echo, but anyhow, uh, moving on, switching gears. Um, well, getting back to what we... Uh, mentioned earlier about the lockdowns and how they helped humanity now um going uh, back to normal after the uh thing was over i mean uh back to normal well <laughs> yeah, why do you want to go back to normal if how it was before the lockdowns was just a system of enslavement i mean um it was actually said by some people including tolek of the andromeda council that um the uh, lockdowns were not actually designed by the dark hats. All the conspiracy people like David Icke would assert that the lockdowns were um, <clears throat> done by the dark hats in order to crash the global economy for their own benefit. However, a few people have said that it was not, it was not really the dark hats that wanted the lockdowns to happen. It was the white hats that wanted the lockdowns to happen. Uh, and one of the primary reasons was to, um, when the earth was shut down like that, it enabled all the white hats and benevolent factions to more easily take out the uh, dark factions, uh, particularly the criminal bankers that have uh, controlled humanity for 6,000 years with the Babylonian money, uh, enslavement system, and consumerist um, society. If that was the case, though, then you have to wonder why is it that when we went back to normal, we didn't go back to a system where everybody is more free and everything and uh, all the technologies that had been suppressed were released. <laughs> well, um, is stuff really going on behind the scenes that we are not aware of that would not have been able to go on behind the scenes had the lockdown not happened? I guess a more appropriate question for me to ask you is do you agree or disagree with the idea that it was the White Hats that um, wanted the lockdowns to happen so they could shut down the system of domination and control at a faster rate when the earth was shut down? Or is that not really what happened? Is there something else that we're not being told? There's many, there's, there's many different events that are happening unbeknownst to us. I had experienced some things last year that most people are not privy to as well. But the, the whole thing is, as the darkness monitors the light and the light monitors the darkness, when there's an opportunity to be had to protect the timelines, because the timelines are very important for each age. As we go through these cycles, we are growing as souls. We're learning from all of these different lessons and experiences that we encounter in our physical life. And so this is very important. So there are different beings with higher consciousness that are monitoring everything in our evolution here. Some of the things have to be allowed in order for the light to gain its consciousness as well, to gain control of our world and try to help things along. So I do feel like it was an opportunity because they probably knew that there was going to be the shutdown. And so the opportunity arose for them to strike while the iron's hot, so to speak to go ahead and start bringing some of these possessed people into custody. And I believe that is what's happening because I ask my inner self and I want to encourage others to in, it, uh, start to engross and grasp on to your inner wisdom. If each person has their own intuition and their own inner guidance that can guide them through 
different situations. So I ask inwardly when I have a question about the world or any other other thing. And I asked inwardly, I'm like, why is it if these people are getting arrested and I've seen it on Monkey Works channel where all the flights were going in and out of Gitmo for a very long time there. And it was daily, like hundreds of flights daily going in and out. And it was a lot of activity going around the world during the lockdowns, which was interesting when everything else is shut down and they're like, why are these flights happening? So I asked Emily, I'm like, why is the population not allowed to know about these arrests? You know, if this is really happening and my inner wisdom told me that it's because these people are demonically possessed and in order to put them on trial, they have to depossess them before they are executed. Otherwise, the demonic possessing spirit will just go into another body. They have to be sent back to where they came from. And the Vatican has been the scourge of the earth to be summoning these things from the denizens of the deep. You know, they're, they're coming from the underworld, which is hell in, in the Yggdrasil narrative. It's H-E-L, and there is a world underground because it's a world that we are not privy to. It's a world we cannot see. So we can't go validate this. And since this culture, especially in this country, is not spiritual but religious, they follow a doctrine that puts the power outside themselves. And this is what's happened. It's like a, a black magic mind control. It's not a benevolent thing that they've done to the minds of the masses because they did march around the world with the inquisitions and they destroyed people for their knowledge. So this has been going on for thousands of years and now it's time for the tide to change as the pendulum swings and to start moving towards the light. Although we will be experiencing darkness through the age of Capricorn, more challenges basically. Yeah, like I said, the um, <clears throat> Aquarius, Pluto and Aquarius is only for a couple months before it goes back to Capricorn. And um, just wanted to point out that uh, I read a couple of uh, works, including this work called Adventures of a Real Risk Taker, that did actually mention that 2023 will be one of the more chaotic years in human history. And based on what's happening with the banking system, I think there may be some truth to what, <laughs> what may be going down. We don't know what's going to go down, but something's going to go down. So uh, um, one video here that stands out here, uh, this will be the last subject before I ask uh, that to everybody else to listen to the rest of this will pay-per-view on patreon let's talk about the center of the earth is gold you uploaded that uh three months ago now uh what exactly is the center of the earth i'm sure all the uh flat earth people would say there is no center well the flat earth people i think are out of their uh lost their marbles um so uh they don't know what they're talking about um the uh as far as the center of the earth do you mean the core well mainstream science says the core is iron but um Apparently it's, uh, I don't know, they say we know it's iron because of what goes on around it, but um, I think they're not looking at a few things there. As far as the earth being gold, well, the center of the earth being gold, well, real gold or monatomic gold and um, other sources I just heard say the earth center of the earth for all intents and purposes is a fourth dimensional star. Um, and uh, but what are stars made of? Not nuclear fusion, that's a mainstream science lie. They're electric in nature according to the um, Electric Universe enthusiasts. So uh, what exactly is the center of the Earth? Gold, what is gold and what is the center of the Earth? <laughs> Why do you, do you agree or disagree with those that say it's a fourth dimensional star? Is that star a monatomic gold perhaps? <laughs> no, based on my research and based on um, evidence that's being presented today, we've been lied to on a grand scale and one of the main purveyors of lies is NASA. NASA is actually pronounced Nasha in Hebrew. Nasha is a Hebrew term that means deceiver. Deceiver, and this is why I say getting back to the etymology of words will bring you home and make you really think and question our reality and who is at the forefront of writing our history, number one. And since we know a lot of the scientific data that's out here is actually made up bunk, by a bunch of lives and thieves and swindlers of Tatarian narrative, they they usurped the beautiful world that once was. And the center of the earth is actually, you can find this on some of the older maps. 
These people of the golden age were actually very intelligent. So if you start reading things by Pythagoras, Plato, Ptolemy, Aristotle, and you know, or others, there's also the map makers of the 1500s. They're gonna tell you a very, very different picture from what we've been told through our mainstream lies um, on television. They're gonna tell you that the, for example, I would say Monty's map. Monty's map of the 1500s, go and have a look at that. It's a very fascinating map. It actually shows more land than what we've ever been told. And there are all other similar maps to this map, like Mercator's map of the 1500s as well, shows the center of the Earth. The center of the Earth is what we consider the North Pole. The North Pole is actually a, looks like the game Simon. <laughs> And yes, there are frosty zones there. Apparently there's snowy mountain peaks there. There's almost impenetrable, but it is said that that is Hyperborea. And when you start looking into Hyperborea and all of the information there, you start learning in ancient cultures like part of Tibet and India, they talk about the kings of the four corners who guard the world and they live in Mount Sumeru, which is where the gods live. And if you go anywhere over there to Tibet and India today, I'm sure that they will still tell you these things. There's actually a national park over somewhere in India that is dedicated to Mount Sumeru. And it even depicts the Rainbow Bridge and the temple there where the gods are supposed to be. It's a, it's a very interesting subject. But there's tales about um, Olaf Jensen and his son, they actually ended up in Hyperborea. They said that there was a land that was up there where these people were, and they're very tall in stature. And it seemed like they always lived in a golden spring. They, those people stayed there for two years. And on the way back, the father ended up dying, uh, and the son made it back, and he told his story to his native people. And the people thought he was crazy, so they locked him up. And of course, they didn't believe him because this is what we are leaving now. We're leaving the age of I believe and we're going into the age of I know. That's why all of these things are going to be revealed. This is actually. I didn't press the uh, start recording button. Oh, OK. okay. Yeah, go ahead. OK, now it's going. You were saying if you look at a Western theology chart. All right. Yes. Go. All right. And if you look at a Western astro theology chart. There are different statements for each age. We're going into the age of Aquarius. Have you heard that much? Yeah. Um, yeah, I've heard that many times. We just don't know what time period specifically. But. Yeah, so, and I believe that there are timekeepers that are here. And they've tried to throw us off the mark with our timelines, but the... If you look at the Western astro theology chart, the age of Pisces slogan was, I believe. And it's associated to the two feet, which is the two fish of Pisces. That's what, because each age is gonna to correlate to specific body parts. So now that we're going into the age of Aquarius, we're rising up to the ankles, from the feet to the ankles. And the next slogan is, I know based on all of the water that is pouring out of the Aquarius's jug in the, the icon that's known for Aquarius as a man pouring the water from a jug, the water symbolizes knowledge. And all of the knowledge is pouring back into the collective consciousness. And that knowledge is going to give us the foundations again to the tools we need to move forward in the world to try to heal the world and heal ourselves. Some people will keep going with the technocracy and all of the society that's built around all of the technology here. And some people will sell their soul over to this notion of the metaverse. So there's two factions that are rising. There's the metaphysical where we know about our spirit because the reconnectivity to spirit is the magic that we've been missing. People don't know about their own innate abilities, but you can start to learn once you connect with your inner wisdom or your spirit, which is also your intuition. And this is all part of the knowledge that's being taught. If you, you know, learn from hermetics or you learn in different ways about how to meditate and 
doing these spiritual practices like pranayama breath work and and such you know spiritual things grounding yourself to the earth sun gazing eating a proper diet and you know really focused on your health because your body is the temple that houses the soul that's the connecting point and a lot of people are reaching that right now they're they're striving to do better for themselves and for others and that's what it means to actually come into your christ consciousness or your self-awareness and to know that everything every action that you have outwardly is going to have some effect on our world in a positive or negative way because everything is the yin and yang that's why i say you know getting back to the foundational truths is the most important thing that we can start teaching children right now Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. At this point, um, folks, uh, for the rest of this interview, there may only be about 10, 15 minutes left, but um, please uh, subscribe on Patreon to listen to the rest of this this day and age. There's something wrong with people asking to profit off their work and uh, make a little money off their work. And uh, folks, help me out with that, please. There aren't many subscribers on Patreon for me. I hope you guys will consider changing that by subscribing um, <clears throat> and uh, not not. not the stuff we discussed at the end of the interview is any more or less important than the stuff that's discussed during the free part. But uh, just a request I make for this is that if you please uh, subscribe to Patreon to listen to it. And with that being said, in the last 10, 15 minutes,